Hi guys, I'm Dimitri from XYZ Create and I got fat. Now, I'll admit, it's mostly my fault, but to my credit, all the gyms in my area have been closed and have you seen the price of home gym equipment? Golly! But you know what isn't expensive? Concrete. I got this 50 pound bag for right around $5 and that gave me an idea. Ugh. Concrete dumbbells. I start this project off with an 8 inch cardboard sauna tube. So I'll be cutting this pipe down into 2 and a quarter inch tall sections and in order to make that easier I created a super high tech tool. These will act as our concrete forms later on, but for now, I set them aside and work on the handles and support pieces. For them, I'll be using these pre-drilled rebar stakes. These things are super strong, and the pre-drilled holes will come in handy when attaching the pieces together. I want this hole to line up in the center of the support piece, so I use it to line up the center of the cut lines. Measuring this way allows me to cut off the uneven ends of the rebar, which prevents the pieces from sitting perpendicular to one another. So, I'll be cutting these down to size using a reciprocating saw, but you absolutely do not need to have one of these. You can do the exact same thing with an inexpensive hacksaw. But this is what I have, so I'm using it. I repeated the previous steps until I had four support pieces. With the support pieces cut, I can measure out the handles, and I made sure to leave three quarters of an inch from the outermost holes. With the rebar pieces cut to size, I removed any burrs and rounded over the edges which made them a lot safer to handle. I cut a few grooves on the side of the support pieces which gives the adhesive something to bite into. Speaking of adhesive, I'll be using Total Boat 4 Minute Epoxy to attach all the pieces together. After thoroughly mixing the epoxy, I add a generous amount to both ends of the handle pieces. Working on a sheet of parchment paper to prevent sticking, I press the pieces together. When pressing the pieces together, I make sure that these holes are in line with one another. I use one, two, three blocks to keep the pieces pressed firmly against one another until the epoxy cures. The parchment paper worked perfectly and the parts released cleanly. I want these pieces to be super secure, so using some rebar wire, I strengthen the connection by wiring them together. Using some good old fashioned elbow grease, I wrap the wire around the pieces as tightly as I could get it. This is where making sure all the holes lined up in the previous step pays off, as it makes wiring these up a whole lot easier. I also flooded the wire wraps with CA glue just to further strengthen everything. With these pieces done, I can move on to completing the concrete forms. I attached some packaging tape to some scrap MDF. This will act as a smooth bottom for the forms. Typically, a sheet of melamine is used, but I didn't have any on hand, so I improvised. I'm happy to report this worked just as well. 
I ran a card scraper over the tape, giving me a smooth, flat surface. To attach the forms to the MDF base, I'll be using my trusty hot glue gun. I applied a heavy bead around the entire perimeter to ensure that I didn't have any leaks. To ensure that the concrete release is easier, I added a layer of paste wax to the bottom of the forms. So, these forms are good to go, but I can't leave these pieces unsupported like this. So you know what that means. With the support beams in place, I can attach the handle assemblies. I use a 3 quarter inch thick piece of wood to give me the correct spacing from the bottom. Using a bubble level, I ensure that it's a perfect 90 to the form. I mark the piece's location using a scratch all. Referencing the mark, I drill a hole all the way through the support beam. Using a nail, I lock the piece at the correct height. Lastly, I hot glue everything into place so it doesn't shift around. I repeat these steps for both handle assemblies. With all the prep work done, it's finally time to start mixing concrete. I'm using Quickly 5000 for this, because it's one of the strongest, most readily available concrete mixes found at most home improvement stores. I add all eight cups of concrete into the mixing tray and create a small well in the center. I add about half a cup of water and mix thoroughly. I keep adding water slowly until I get the consistency I'm after, which in this case is like a super thick oatmeal. With the concrete thoroughly mixed, I can start adding it to the forms. I start by filling the space underneath the support piece with as much concrete as will fit. Once I'm happy with the amount of concrete under the support piece, I start filling all the way to the top. Once the form is full, I can start smoothing out the top of the concrete with the back of the shovel. With both concrete forms full, the next thing I need to do is to vibrate all the air bubbles out. One way to do this is with a vibrating power tool like this random orbit sander. Personally, I found the sander to be a little messy. So I switched to using hammers. This is a great low tech option that worked just as well as the sander and as a bonus was a whole lot less messy. To get all the bubbles out, I alternated between hitting the MDF base as well as gently tapping the cardboard form itself. Double wielding the hammers was a lot of fun, and I'll admit, I got a little carried away with it. With all of that out of the way, the only thing left to do now is let the concrete sit and cure. Once I confirmed that the concrete was set up enough, I could start removing it from the form and supports. I misted isopropyl alcohol on all the areas with hot glue, weakening the bond and making it much easier to remove. Removing the hot glue from the cardboard sauna tube was incredibly satisfying. Using a utility knife, I scored the cardboard form and started peeling it away. It's best to go slow with this step because it's pretty easy to cut right through the cardboard into the concrete.
I removed any remaining bits of cardboard and the excess concrete flashing around the edges is easily picked off. With the concrete out of the form, I could remove it from the MDF base. And this is where I found out just how much I like to stick to it. Come on, let's go. Please move, come on. I was eventually able to get it off this way, but as I later learned, using a pry tool like this spatula is so much easier. With the concrete free from its cardboard and MDF prison, I could get a look at the underside. I really love the surface the tape covered MDF gave, and while not as smooth as if I had used melamine for a low cost option, I'm happy with the result. With one half of the dumbbells complete, I could just rinse and repeat for the other half. With all the weight on top of the dumbbell and nothing underneath, I did have to use shims to keep it level, but everything else was exactly the same. With the other half of the dumbbells out of the form and all cleaned up, this project is done. So I hope you guys had as much fun watching this video as I did making it. And if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, check out some of my other videos. That'll do it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey you. Yeah, I'm talking to you, shrimp. Do you want to get big like me? Mucho man, then cabbage. Pow, blam, blam, pow. And you need to get yourself the XYZ Muscle Blaster 9000. Oh yeah. The XYZ Muscle Blaster 9000 can be yours for 99 easy payments of 999.99. Oh yeah. Call today. And you better be hitting that subscribe button. Or I'll be hitting something. If you know what I'm saying.